first installment of the Red Barn Bible Study on Facebook Live. So we're just going to try this and see how it works. We would love your feedback. And so you can send us personal messages on Facebook. Or you can email us or text us, whatever. But just let us know what you think. So if you are not used to our normal schedule, we always have a quick prayer. Troy usually does that or one of you guys. But since we're not together, I will pray. So if you would bow your heads and we'll pray together to get started. So Father God, I thank you so much for this opportunity. It's it's a really difficult and challenging time right now. In our country. We don't know what to expect. We don't know what's going to happen. And I know there's a lot of uncertainty and fear. We really do pray that this Bible study will be an opportunity for kids to hear your word, and maybe not just kids, but for all of us to hear your word and to learn from it that we can trust you through anything. And even though we can't be together, God, I pray that this would reach out to many and would give them hope and comfort and encouragement and support through this time. I just ask you to help whatever I say to be just what you would want said and that you would guard all of our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, so we're not going to finish the Gospel of John because I want to save that until we're together. I, I look out and I think about the faces that I'm used to seeing in the circle at Bible study. And we miss you guys so much already. And it's only been like less than a week. And so I know that you all are experiencing the same kind of feelings that we are. It's confusing. It's, it's sad. Um, I know we want to be positive and because we're believers, we want to keep a really encouraging note in our, in our lives, but it's okay to grieve. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be disappointed. Um, for some of you, you know, you're missing out on friends and school, even though you don't like the school part so much. You do love seeing your friends. And so we know this is a really difficult time. So for tonight, at least for today's Bible study, my plan is we're going to just hit a few highlights from the Gospel of John that where Jesus talked about peace specifically. And for you who were at Bible study last Thursday, we did um, the second passage in the Sunday night appearance of Jesus after his resurrection in John chapter 20. And if you remember, the first time the disciples saw the risen Christ was after, I mean, Mary Magdalene saw him that morning, Sunday morning when he'd risen, but they didn't see him till that night. And where were they? wish some of you guys could could respond and tell me who remembers where they were. They were in a locked room. They were hiding because they were afraid of the Jews because the Jewish leaders had arrested Jesus and had him killed. So they figured they were next. And so they were all hiding behind a locked door. And right in the midst of that moment, in that locked room, Jesus appeared to them. And what were his first and only, the first words he said to them? Do you remember? They're really important. Four words, four words. He said, peace be with you. And I think that's huge. It's kind of like whenever angels appear, he said, do not be afraid. But I think Jesus's words of saying, peace be with you are, are gigantic. They're huge words that we can carry with us throughout our lives. And, and he knew the disciples needed peace. And a thing I forgot to mention last Thursday um, and the Thursday before is it's very possible that the peace Jesus was talking about was saying, it went along with what one of his, his last words on the cross were. He said, it is finished when he was dying on the cross. And he meant that the work he needed to do on earth was completed. It was finished. And it was finished because his death took care of our sins. <clears throat> it covered them covered all the sins of all people of all time. And so when he says peace, he means peace with God. He's saying you have peace with God if you believe me, if you love me, if you know me, and if you follow me. And so this peace be with you is a really big comment that he makes to them and covers them with it. And so he says it twice that night, that night when he appears to the disciples. He says, peace be with you twice. Now, if you remember, who wasn't there that first time he talked to them? Anybody? Do you remember who was missing? It was Thomas. And remember, Thomas was the doubter. Doubting Thomas wasn't there. And so when the, 
disciples told him the next day or whatever, seen the Lord. And Thomas is like, well, I'm not believing it until I touch the marks in his hands and put my hand in his side where his, you know, the sword or the spear pierced him. Until that happens, I won't believe that he's risen. Now he's talking to, to 10 of his best friends. They've been together hanging out for three years, but he doesn't believe them. And, you know, it's like we kind of get mad at Thomas, but then I think how and, and feeling kind of insecure and maybe you've been doubting some, maybe you've wondered, is God really good? Is God really in charge? Why would all this be happening? And we're a lot like Thomas, we, we do doubt and that's okay. Just because Thomas was doubting I think it didn't mean that he'd given up. I think it meant he really wanted to see Jesus. He really wanted to see Jesus. And so the following week, interestingly enough, he had to wait a week, but they were all again in a locked room, still scared. And Thomas was with them. And all of a sudden Jesus appears and he says again, peace be with you. But he also says to Thomas, hey, over here and put your hands, here's the marks on my hands your hand to my side and Thomas I don't we don't know it doesn't tell us if Thomas did or did not do those things that Jesus said he could but it says that Thomas said my Lord and my God he believed and Jesus said you know it's great you believed because you see me but blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe he was talking about us because we haven't seen Jesus and so this week when we're doubting and fearful remember that you know Jesus came and Thomas was there. He said, peace be with you. And he gave that reassurance that Thomas needed. So he knows what we need and we need peace right now. That's for sure. So another verse I want to share with you is um, John 14, 27. So that's been quite a while back. I want to share that because we're in John. We just finished John chapter 20. We're ready for 21. Then we see each other again. But John 14, 27, I'm going to read it um, in three different versions because I really feel like um, we read the New Living Translation at the Red Barn, and it's good. I mean, it's, it's basically pretty on target with the translation from the Greek, but there are some things that are lacking. And so I want you to hear this verse in three different versions just to kind of hear the difference. So the first one I'm going to read is the New International Version. And he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Whoa, yeah, those, those words really get me. That the part about, you know, we'll talk later. Let me, let me go through with the other version. Okay, this is from the New Living Translation, the one we use at the Red Barn all the time. I am leaving, and this is Jesus talking, I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. All right? That one just sounds a little too casual. Okay. But if that's too casual, then this one for you guys may be a bit too formal. We'll see. This is from the King James Version. Now remember, the King James Version was written in 16 or translated in 1611. People used to say, be thou and giveth and taketh and all those kinds of strange words, but it was very carefully translated from the original Hebrew and Greek. So don't be putting King James down too much. So listen to it in King James. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And I love that, the whole neither either one. Don't let your heart be troubled, but neither let it be afraid. You know that the verse specifically says that Jesus is giving us a different kind of peace. You know that the peace the world could offer right now would mean the coronavirus was cured and we all got to go back to school and work and go eat at restaurants and go to a movie, whatever, and there'd be toilet paper. You know, that would be our kind of peace, the world peace. But that's not what Jesus gives us. World peace doesn't last. I mean, look at where we are right now. We're all, you know, it's different. Life changed. And we can't get the kind of peace the world gives right now because it's not available. But the kind of peace, the peace that Jesus offers is always available. It's not 
world peace. It's not the kind of peace that means everything's going great. It's the kind of peace that says, I am with you, not me. Jesus is with you. When we know God is with us. That kind of peace goes much deeper and holds us up much better than anything the world would have to offer anyway. Bibles, and I really encourage you guys, please take time to read the Bible. During this season, it's going to be very different. I mean, Troy said that Eastbrook has announced, or I don't know if the governor announced, I don't know who announced, but schools aren't going to go back till May 1st, at the earliest. So we got a block of time here. And the first couple days, I really struggled. I started working with the all remotely, and it was really hard. I really struggled with it. And so I had to realize I, I've got to make some adjustments. I need to adjust my attitude. I need to adjust my thinking. And I also needed to realize that this is a time I could commit to learning new things, trying new things, um, establishing habits that maybe I've lacked. Well, and Troy and I are both going to start walking because we need to. And so we're going to start exercising more. We'll have more time put into practice some of the things that we know are positive and good for us. And one of those I really want to do is reading the Bible more. And I know you guys probably think, well, probably you read the Bible all the time. No, I don't. I should. I could. I don't. I read the Bible in the morning, and I do read devotions in addition to that, but I, I read the Bible in the morning, and then a lot of times maybe I'll read a verse somewhere here in the day. But in the evenings, like last night, I sat and watched Family Matters over and over. I mean, like reruns after reruns. I mean, Unlike everybody else, we get into those bad habits and have to realize we don't have to stay there. We don't have to stay up all night on our phones. I don't do that, but I think some of you probably do. We could do something else. So really wisely, God could use this in your life. Really make a difference. Change your life. So let him, give him the freedom to convict you of things that need to change. Give him the freedom to love you and to give you the peace that he offers. Give him the freedom to move in your life. And, you know, I know some of you are in places that are not necessarily positive. That's why we love the Red Barn, because we can at least, even if you guys are going crazy and running all over the place and driving us nuts sometimes, we know you're safe. We know where you are and we know we can love you. And so I know some of you are in places that that's not happening. You're not, you don't necessarily feel safe or you don't necessarily feel loved. And we are, we wish we could be there with you. We can't be, but Jesus can be. Please invite him in. Let him be part of your life. Let him walk with you through this weird coronavirus time. And I got one last verse and then we're going to do, we can't do normal prayer requests. A little different. I'm having a real hard time not seeing all of your faces, and it's really hard not to have any interaction. It makes me think of those nights where there's only a few and nobody wants to read out loud. Everybody just kind of sits there and hopes I won't look at them. This is kind of like that. So, you know, it's it's awkward for me too, but it's worth doing it if it helps us all to learn more about God, to move forward in our Bible study, and to be encouraged. So, I'm gonna keep doing it every week, and. We would appreciate, like, for prayer requests, you can just send them to us on a you know, private message, or like I said, you could text it to us, or you can, whatever. Find a way to get the information to us. Go on, some of you don't have Facebook, so I mean, a lot of people aren't going to see this. We're going to figure out a way to post this on Instagram. So that's going to happen at some point. We'll try to get that going by next Thursday. You know, if you can get on Facebook and look, we're going to keep these saved and that way they'd be archived. And if you want to watch them, you can. So I've got one more verse and then we're going to do some prayer requests. So the last verse I want to read to you is John 16, 33. And this would be a really good memory verse. Um, so I don't know. I don't know how many of you guys have really ever tried to memorize the Bible. Well, memorize a verse. There are very few that have memorized the whole Bible. I think Trevor would remind me that the book of Eli talks about a guy who had memorized the whole Bible. But, and I don't recommend that movie, by the way. But many people do memorize verses or 
chunks of chapters or whole books of the Bible. So it's possible to do it. You may think, well, I'm not able to, I'm not smart enough, I can't do that. I used to think I wasn't able to memorize scripture, but there are ways to do it. And I'll actually give you a pointer on that before we close out tonight. But here's the last verse. This is John 16, 33, and I'm reading it from the New Living Translation, the, the translation we use at the Red Barn. I have told you all this, Pause for a second. When, whenever you see something like that, or the word therefore, because I told you all this, you have to think about everything that came before this. So John 16 is after all these chapters where Jesus had been talking to his disciples. So go back and read John 1 through 15, and then you can catch up. But I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So not just is he gonna give us peace, according to John 14, he's going to heaven, he's giving us peace that the world can't give, but he overcame the world completely. He owns death, guys, he took it out. And so there's nothing that can overcome him. And so I really want you to think about, you know, if you try memorizing, 1833 might be a good one to start with. Some of you know John 3, 16, so this is 1633. Just try it. So one way to memorize Bible verses, let me just give you this technique and see if it helps you. So if you um, have a verse you wanna memorize, look it up in the Bible and then carefully, word for word, write it down on like an index card or a or piece of scrap paper, but be really careful. What I do is I look one or two words at a time I say them out loud and then I write those down and then I go back and I read the next couple of words. I don't try to re remember it while I'm writing it down. I don't wanna make a mistake and write it down incorrectly. So I'm really careful in, in writing it down. But the act of writing helps our brains to think. And so it's important that physical part of scripture engagement of writing the verse out is really good. That's a good start. So I got on a piece of paper, now what do I do? Well, the next thing you do is you turn it over and on the back, you put day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. And just kind of list them from the top to the bottom. And on day one, you're going to make, you know what little hash marks are, the little lines. So you do one, two, three, four, and then you slash over it for five. You're going to make little slash marks. And you're going to read it out loud, not trying to memorize it. You're just looking at it and reading it out loud 25 times day one. And you get lots of time because I'm sure the e-learning thing, systematically. But just take time throughout the day, just grab it out of your pocket or grab it off the desk or whatever, and just read it out loud. Look at it and read it out loud 25 times, day one. Okay? Got all those hash marks in. Day two, you're going to read it 20 times out loud. Make all those hash marks 20 times. Day three, 15. Day four, 10. Now, day five, you read it five times out loud, but I'll bet you you don't need to look at it that much. By day five, it starts to sink in and you get it. And so I really encourage you guys to try this method because I didn't think I could memorize scripture and I was a Christian at Bible at Taylor. And I really struggled with script, scripture memorization until I tried this technique. So, so please try it. If you're interested in, in verses that might be good, I gave you one suggestion, but you know, get in touch with me and I'd be happy to give you more. Um, but you know, let us know what you think about this. I know it's about 10 minutes, so we're gonna do prayer. Can't do specific requests. I'm not gonna say anybody's name out loud over the, um, the internet. I'm not gonna do that, but I am gonna pray in general for some things I think are on our hearts. And then, if, like I said, if you guys have any specific prayer requests, please do send them to us find a way to get them to us, okay? Because we really we really care about you guys and we really miss you. Um, and I know there's probably a lot, I shouldn't say there's a lot of people, I hope there's not a lot of people watching that kind of freaks me out, but there may be those watching. That's okay, we love you too. And if you have a specific prayer requests that we could pray for, please let us know. I don't know what audience this will reach. I don't even know if anybody's watching. But I do know that it's God's word. And if you read God's word, it's powerful and it's gonna transform you from the inside out. So if you watch this and you do have a prayer request, then just let us know. And it'll be on Facebook, it'll be recorded. And so maybe a week from now, even somebody's gonna have a prayer request. Send it to us. We'll pray when we get it. 
So right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, we need to be praying for, and I'm gonna do this. So I would encourage you to pray. Um, and some of you may not be real comfortable with prayer. I know a lot of times, you know, when we do the Red Barn Bible study, it kind of goes around the circle real fast because, you know, it is kind of weird to pray out loud the first time or the first few times or maybe forever. I don't know, but. Praying out loud, you know, it's not necessary. God's not hard of hearing. He can hear us even before we say stuff. So it's not so much that we need him to hear us, but when we pray out loud, we hear each other and we can agree with each other. And that's really important in prayer. And so when I pray, pray with me. But then when you're home by yourself and you pray, and if nobody's around, pray out loud. It's a powerful way to release some things and it makes you feel more connected to God. It's kind of awkward to pray quietly because I don't know about you, but my mind gets really distracted. You guys know me. I'm a good grief squirrel. And so just take time to, to, to quietly pray out loud to God. Just like you talk to a friend, talk to somebody that you trust. That's who he is. He's a friend. He's the friend you can trust. And so, okay, so one of the things I'm going to pray for is for our government because we need to be praying for the people in control and in power who need to make wise decisions and need to know the best thing to do. So I'm gonna pray for them. And that's something you can do too. I'm gonna to pray for your parents because this is a really hard time on them. There's a lot of stress financially. Um, there's a lot of stress just knowing what to do, how to do it, and everything's different. And then I'm gonna pray for you guys because this is really hard on all of you, I know. And I'm gonna pray for some specific things. So and we'll be done in just a few minutes. You know what? This is the one way, so far it's the only way I've found, one way to get me to end right at five because I don't have you with me. As you guys know, I always go over. It's hard to stop at five. But on Facebook Live, it'll probably be easy. So you don't have to bow your head. It's one way we show God we respect and honor him. You don't have to close your eyes, but it's one way we keep from being distracted. You don't have to fold your hands, but it does let God know this is all I'm doing. I'm just honoring you. So I'm going to do all three. And if you can just join me and we'll pray. So Father God, I thank you for this time we've had together. It's it's hopefully going to be an encouragement to somebody. I don't know who's watching. I don't know who will watch. But if even just one person receives um, your word and it changes them or it encourages them or it helps them, then, then this is worth it. It makes me a little nervous. And so, God, I just pray that I don't come across too weird, but that I stay out of the way and just let your word do what it needs to do in people's lives. But we do pray for the government. God, we pray for the these cities in our states, and our country, in the world. God, we pray for them to have wisdom. I know they don't know what to do. This is a, a totally weird time that they've never experienced. Nobody in our generation or our lifetime has ever gone through anything like this. And so we don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. Please help them to pray, help them to listen to you, help them to want to do your will and not their own. And just really pray for your protection over them and just safety and wisdom. Pray for the, the CDC, the Central Center for Disease Control. I know so many of them are working around the clock to try to find an antiviral or to find something that will help and that will, you know, we can't cure it, but maybe we could stop it from killing people. God, please, we just ask in your name, the doctor's wisdom to know how to make a difference, how to change this. And God, we do, I pray for the parents of kids from the Red Barn and just kids in general, God, and that's such a stressful thing, God. So we do pray for the parents for patience, pray for the kids to be thoughtful and caring and that they would kind of take a deep breath before they overreact or get too upset, help them to be honest about their feelings. I pray that they would grieve, they would allow themselves to be sad, but that they wouldn't stay there, God, that they would, they would trust you and that they would be able to get the help they need to walk through this time in you. And God, I do pray for the parents too. Financially, we just pray for you to help help to provide for them, help food to be available, help them to be able to make the payments they need to, just really give them wisdom about how to survive this time. Help us all to support each other too. And I pray for the kids, Father. I really just ask you, please surround them with your love, help them to sense your presence, help them to read the Bible, God, help them to know that you love them, 
that you want to walk with them through this and that you you really aren't you're never going to leave or forsake us and so they can trust you and maybe make a choice to follow you now and maybe they've never made that choice before let this be the time god i just pray that you'd help them to have hope that this is not permanent this is temporary and that every day it might get harder but every day is another opportunity to trust you and to walk through whatever this is we don't know how long it's going to last but that doesn't matter because you're eternal so we just ask for all of us to trust put our trust in you and i do pray that you give us opportunities to to find other ways to encourage each other so we just thank you so much for loving us we thank you for this time together and we just pray that we would learn how to glorify you during this time in jesus name amen Okay, got five minutes to go, but I don't know if there's other things I can say that would really be helpful. And so I'll remind you of some things. We'll we'll try to do Facebook Live every Thursday, 4.30 to 5. We will try to get it posted on Instagram too. So that I know some of you do not have Facebook accounts. I hope a few. I know I texted a few people. I hope a few figured out a way to get on their parents' Facebook pages. I know Facebook for old people. I'm old. What can I say? So we'll try to get more tech savvy and figure out the instagram piece but at any rate try to watch again next week um tell your friends to go on and to get the recorded video if there's a way you guys can figure out how to take it from facebook and share it on instagram do it i don't care who watches it i don't care if they laugh at me and think i look really stupid that's okay i don't really care because it's god's word and that's all i care about so we care about you guys and so we want things to be an encouragement to you so I'm going to close off and I think I'm, I've got four minutes left. So really the time went pretty well. Um, I would love other, you guys can make suggestions about how we can do this, how I can do a better job or make it personal or whatever. Just let us know and, and please know that we love you very much and we are praying for you every day. Thanks for joining me.